a large part of our psychological health comes from feelings of belonging. That is a sense of connection with other people, being part of a group where you feel like they appreciate you for who you are and what you bring to the table. Now, it's easy to go down all these different rabbit holes of belonging and how one person might fit in, but it becomes pretty complex as you dig deeper into the psychology of it all. There's so many nuances here with people on what they believe, how they see the world, what inspires them, all that stuff. So today I want to talk about one specific area, and it's about kind of the psychology of being cool. So when I think about this early, early childhood, when we're still trying to develop a sense of self, right, and be cool, whatever that means, it was really challenging going from elementary school to middle school, because in elementary school, it was all about Pokemon cards and handball and baggy sweaters and just being a little kid, right? But then as soon as we went into middle school, there was this massive transition that everyone was seeing and being a part of, but everyone's still kind of awkward and weird at the same time. There's all these hormones flooding your body. It's a very transformative and uncomfortable time for a lot of people. And it kind of sucked for a lot of people in a lot of ways. So now all of a sudden, everyone's doing different things. They're listening to different music. They're wearing different clothes. They're interacting with people in different ways. And I remember I was so stupid and naive and I tried so hard to fit in and be cool because I thought by trying to be like everyone else, that would make me cool. That would make me accepted. And that would make me feel a sense of belonging. Now, at the time, I didn't know anything about psychology. I didn't really know much about people, but subconsciously I knew I wanted to fit in. I wanted to feel like I was part of some group, some community that was bigger than I was. And I realized after the fact how lame I was for trying to be cool and forcing things rather than being my authentic self. So we'll come back to that later in the video, but today I wanna to touch on a few different facets of the psychology of coolness to just shed some light on this topic. So it's really interesting because there's five broad areas when you think about the psychology of coolness. So for number one, we have our adolescent development. When you think about this, this is like our self-esteem and our identity development. This is a phase where we're establishing our values, our morals, the ways in which we see the world. So you have your biology, but then you also have how your parents raised you. You have certain experiences and communication styles and all these different things that are impacting the way that you see the world. Then you look at social perception and attraction. How many friends do you have? And how many people look to you for creating other friendships. There's this idea that if you look better, you're more fun to be around. If someone's attractive, they're just interesting by default. So if you have those things, then you tend to be more cool in some ways for other people. And this can vary based on where you live, many other factors as well. It's really interesting. The third thing is about social influence and conformity. So this is about how well you influence others to behave and think and how much you conform to groups or don't conform. Someone who's cool, so to speak, is usually not one to conform much to others. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier when I was trying so hard to fit in. And by trying hard to fit in, to be cool, it was making me so much less cool. And now I see that so clearly and blatantly. But back then I didn't see it like that. I literally saw it as, well, this is what everyone else is doing. So if I wanna fit in and I wanna be the coolest person possible and feel that sense of belonging, I need to do what everyone else is doing. I gotta fit in, I gotta copy them, I gotta wear what they're wearing, I gotta smell like them, I gotta eat what they do, I gotta talk about the things they do. Even though deep down I was not really happy. I wasn't thinking about the things that I wanted to do and I wasn't living that out. So that was pretty hard for a little bit, but think about that when you're thinking about 
group norms and conformity, your social perception and how you're developing as a person as you go through those formative years. So the other factor here that's super, super important is cultural variability. This is the idea that every culture has a different set of norms that are acceptable and not acceptable. So if you're growing up in somewhere in the United States, your experience in school with other students is going to be very, very different than if you're growing up somewhere in, say, China, or in a very different environment. The teachers are different, the students are different, the food you eat, the things you see, the types of entertainment you consume. There's so many things that are vastly different. So the sense of coolness, whatever that means, is going to differ culturally and societally as well. There's going to be all these factors that influence this. On top of that, we have our psychological well-being. So this is your associated levels of life satisfaction and your sense of belonging based on how cool you think you are, you feel you are, or how much coolness others think you have. So if we add all these up together and we think, okay, what was I doing when I was young in these formative years? And how did I feel about all of this? What is the psychology of coolness doing to my mind? And was I even aware? And most likely the answer is no, right? There's no sense of understanding of any of this stuff when you're young. You're just this awkward, young, stupid kid who's trying to figure out their way in the world. And no one can blame you for that, right? That's literally just part of being a kid. You think your parents are wrong about everything. You think you're super cool and you're trying to just fit in and look to others of your age group for conformity, for a sense of belonging. You're seeking approval from others outside of your immediate family. And this is a huge growth period in your psychological development because now we're trying to step outside of just our immediate family psychologically to seek that sense of belonging that sense of nurturing and excitement. And so when we think of being cool, we might have it a little bit skewed sometimes. We're looking at so many other people who have so many differing beliefs, but again, this is such a critical formative time in your life. So it's important to get out there and go through all the awkwardness and weirdness and experiment and fail and succeed and do all these different things. So all of this to say, right, we look at adolescent development, social perception and attraction, influence and conformity, cultural variability, and your psychological well-being. And we think, what does it take to feel a sense of belonging? What does it take to actually be cool? So again, looking back, I was going from elementary to middle school to high school and thinking, oh God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I tried that. I can't believe I wore that or said that. I tried so hard to fit in and paradoxically, by trying so hard to be cool and putting so much effort into being cool, it made me super lame and really not cool. And then I started acting more like myself and doing the things that I wanted to do. And that's when I realized this is actually pretty cool because I'm having so much more fun. And then I think back, okay, who are the people that were actually cool? These were the people who were extremely passionate who actually cared about something, who really, really just cared about something bigger than themselves outside of who they were. This is the band geeks, the nerds, the kid that played chess feverishly and studied the game and looked at it so closely. That one kid that was in history class that was talking about all these great stories on how exciting they were and how much they're driven to be in a position of power and influence to help better the world in the future someday. It's crazy to think about because when you're younger, you look at those people and think, oh, they're weird. Those are different people. They're not like everyone else. But the people who wake up every day and really care about something, the people who really, really think about something and put tons of effort into talking about something, even if it's the weirdest craziest, most different thing. I think those are some of the coolest people because they're unapologetically themselves. And I think that's the key formula here. That's the secret to being cool. 
is you just be yourself. And I know I hate saying that such a general term and such a broad thing of like, oh, just be yourself. Well, what if you don't know how to be yourself? Well, you can try plenty of things. You can see what you like, what you don't like. You can go through the awkwardness, like I said, of being young and trying dumb things. But through all those experiences, eventually you gather all these pools of knowledge to pull from and you start to understand a little bit more about what do I like and what do I not like? What do I care about? What do I not care about? Think of the things that give you energy. Think about the people that give you energy. The people that you hang out with that are like, wow, that was really exciting to be around so-and-so because every time I leave their presence, I feel like I'm lifted up. I feel like I'm a little bit better of a person because of that moment. That's really cool. That's interesting. That's something that's exciting. Those people genuinely care about the world. They genuinely care about something. So if you're reflecting back and you're looking and saying, oh, wow, okay, I had all these awkward moments. I did all these weird things. That's totally fine and cool, right? But that's part of the process of trying to learn yourself to become cool again, whatever the heck that means. So if you want to actually be cool and you want to really maximize your sense of belonging, I think you have to really lean in to the most natural part of yourself, the sides of yourself that shine true above everything else, because the less performative we are, the more we attract people who are truly like us. And that in and of itself is the realest, most raw form of belonging. It's other people who accept us, who don't judge us per se. They're just accepting of you for who you really are. And that's exciting and that's super cool. So I hope this was valuable for you. I hope there's some type of relation here on something that you went through when you were young. I'd love to hear in the comments if you had similar stories, any type of barriers, blocks, weird moments, uh, funny stories or tidbits you'd like to share. So would love to hear that. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. As always, remember to take care of yourselves. Remember to take care of those around you. And I'll see you guys next episode.